Main strength last term was definitely science. I did really well in it because I have an interest in science. I'm also doing pretty well in ELA. I love to write stories and narratives. Really, I'm doing well in general, but those are my primary strengths. My area of improvement is probably note-taking. I'm an extremely slow writer, so I rarely finish copying everything from the board. Aside from that, I'm doing fine. That's my general area of improvement. This is how to do a more detailed Google search. But first of all, I do not recommend Google because they literally know where you live. I prefer DuckDuckGo, but this... But I'm not... And I'm pretty sure these tricks work for all search engines. But I'm just going to use Google for an example. So I'm going to search up Galaxy. Because why not? Okay. And there's a bunch of phone ads, which I don't care about. So... I use the minus search command, minus, some, some, I believe that's it. I, oh, there we go. Some, some. And it gets rid of Samsung. It still has a cinema, but I can fix that too. And I can also use plus to make sure it includes specific things. So plus space, because I want galaxies in space. And there we go, and now it's all space galaxies and images. So that is how you do a detailed Google search? There's more. So these are images, and there's, so it gets rid of most phone stuff, and here and on somewhere here, settings, search settings, I can make my searches even more accurate by doing stuff like by setting search settings and using tools, uses right, so labeled for reuse. So if I want to use it in my own thing, I can use these images and it will show me one that I can't use on my own. Okay. Pretty simple. And nice. you can also do when they were uploaded, the type of image, color is even. So let's try red. And now it's red, although that's not really galaxies. Size, etc. That is how you make a more detailed Google search or any search engine. And stop. For this part of the student-led conference, I will be explaining uh, basic home ec procedures. So first of all, safety, very important. If you don't use safety, you will have a very unsafe environment. I really didn't need to say that. Okay, so first of all, always make sure you're not wearing any dangly clothes or anything too big for you roll up your sleeves that way they don't catch on fire which would be very bad you probably get burnt make sure that you if you have long hair make sure you use a hairnet so your hair doesn't get into cooking because that's just gross no one likes food with hair in it except some animals and also, always use an oven mitt to take stuff out of the oven. Like if I have a dish in here, I would put it in my oven mitt before I grabbed it and make sure it's open all the way. And when you put a pot on the stove, make sure the handle is turned inwards. That way you don't accidentally bump it and spill something on you, which would probably hurt. And never put electrical appliances over the sink. Very bad idea. Okay, now this is how to measure some simple ingredients. For water, you want to use a glass measuring cup, 
not this one. Although someone seems to have forgotten that, judging by how wet this is. And let's say I want to measure 50 milliliters of water. So I careful so I hold it at eye level and I carefully pour it in. And that's good. It's that's 50 milliliters, so I have that. Alright, now for flour or baking soda, they're in here. This is the flour. So, make sure you wash your hands first. Use as hot water as you can stand and make sure you have soap. That's a very important step. A washcloth is best for drying them, but paper towel works. Then we scoop it in and use a knife to level it off over the container so we don't get flour on the counter. The flour is very messy and hard to clean up and annoying. You either you generally want to pack it in. It depends on what the recipe says though. There we go. That's around a cup of flour. If I'm not happy with it or I did something wrong, you just dump it out and try again. Okay. For brown or white sugar, you have different procedures for each. For white sugar, you just grab a measuring spoon. Let's say it needs half a tables, half a teaspoon. It says a teaspoon, right? Half a teaspoon of white sugar the recipe calls for. So, oh, oh come on. Wash off the knife. So it doesn't be sour. And you grab it, you just put it in. And if need be, use a knife to help level it. Pack it a little. There you go. Now you're ready to put it in whatever you're making. Although it's not very much sugar. Brown sugar is special. It has more molasses than white sugar, so it clumps together. So you want to pack it really tight like a sandcastle almost. If you shake it out into the mixture, it should come out in a solid lump. brown sugar. As you can see, it's clumped. So when you put it in the cup, you want to pack it down with your knife really hard. And when you shake it out, it should be in one piece. That's how you tell you did it well. A baking powder and baking soda. Oh, they're both good. Baking powder, you put it just one Eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder is called for by the recipe. So you take it, you just level it, and there you go. That's all you need to do. And for salt, you do the same thing. Except the container probably won't be shaped like that. There you go. And now, make sure you always clean up and put everything back where it was. Except, in this case, it was out since this is SOC for demonstrations. And now... Did you forget to put the baking powder back? One second. Thank you for reminding me. Make sure you put your ingredients back where they belong, as I forgot to do with this. Now explain about 
washing dishes. The water should be hot, not cold because that gets rid of the material better. Put the soap in afterwards, so, yeah, after, so it doesn't get super bubbly. Um, make sure you don't clutter it up, because if, so you don't cut yourself on a knife or something that you didn't see. I recommend using gloves, but you don't have to. For the rinse water, I want to put in a tablespoon of bleach, just fill the lid a little less than full, and pour it in, just around half, or roughly half a sink of water. And you dip the dishes in that. And if you, I believe soap will stop the bleach from working. So don't mix them. And when you're cooking, if you touch your clothes or hair, make sure you wash your hands so you don't get dirt on your food. That will be all.